Welcome, welcome. I'm just setting up my uh, my paints. I'll be adding white and red and blue and a little bit of black. And that's all we're gonna need for today. Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome. I'm getting my paint set up right now. Red, white, and blue, and a little smidge of black. Right. So welcome everyone to this wellness break on our Thursday afternoon for Jana Marie Foundation. Thank you so much for being here and painting with me. I was just setting up my my fancy palette here. I've got um, white paint, blue and red, so I can make purples and a little smidgy smooch of black um, for later when we make this really dark, dark purple. Um, so I don't have any purple paint, so I'm going to be using red and blue, but if you have purple paint, that's great. The name of the game here is just mixing different shades of purple, um, or really any color. I mean, this would be a great painting in blues or oranges or greens, really any, any kind of monochromatic, um, painting would be really cool in, in this sort of landscape. So yeah, it's let's have fun and and relax with this really kind of chill landscape together. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Um, brushes. I've got my old trusty uh, flat angled brush, and I'll probably move to a smaller flat angled one for our trees later on. Now I did this um, at home in my sketchbook. And I was using different um, quality paint. I was trying some, um, some old paints that I've had for a long time and I haven't touched them in a while. So they're, they're a higher quality acrylic paint that I used here. So I'm curious about how um, I'll be able to capture the same effect with these more economical types of acrylics that I use. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this one goes, but again, the name of the game is different kinds of purples, different shades that we get with, you know, playing with adding white and maybe black to our purple. So we'll, we will see what happens. So yeah, thanks again for being here. If you're just joining us on this Jana Marie Foundation wellness break, especially important during this month of May which is our Mental Health Awareness Month. So I hope everybody's been hanging in there. Um, I appreciate all the, all the work that Jana Marie Foundation does. I was just walking um, on Allen Street, or driving, I don't remember, but in um, the, the windows of, what is it, the Growing Tree, that toy store in Allen, um, they have all those great signs up from Jana Marie Foundation. And um, thank you everyone also for your support during the Center Gives campaign. I think Jan Marie Foundation did a great job there. Hey James, Tierney. Um, so we appreciate all the support that you, that you guys um, pulled out for Jan Marie Foundation. Awesome. So let's, let's do this. So if you joined me on Tuesday, gosh, was it Tuesday? I don't remember. Um, for our last, oh, it was this one this one right here. If you did this with me on Tuesday, we painted in bands and we're going to do the same thing with this little guy here. So our first band that we're going to look for is this sky. Okay. So we're, we're looking for, and when I say look for, I mean, we're mixing, we're mixing this very, very light, um, lavender color. And again, it's whatever, it's totally up to you what kind of color you want, but I do recommend getting a light, 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 
color for our sky. And then I'm just going to paint that, that band here on my, on my canvas. All right. So I'm going to, I can just leave this here as a reference. I'm going to grab my um, large brush, my large flat brush. I'm going to tap into my white paint to get something started. A little touch of red, a little touch of blue. And I'm going for a really, really light purple. So for me, that right there is a bit too blue. Okay, compared to my sky, so I'm going to add some more red. And that might be it. Oh, I hope you can hear the birds chirping out my, outside my window here. I don't know if you can. All right. That's looking a little bit closer. I might add just a little bit more red. All right, and sort of a, as a rule of thumb, anything you mix on your plate tends to look darker on the canvas. I don't know why, but it just, that sort of seems to be how things work. Um, I think we're almost there. I might add a little bit more red and notice I'm adding little touches of white to make sure I'm not getting too dark. All right, get off all that excess paint in my brush. And I think, I think we've got it. All right, so again, I'm just gonna start with this top band here. So I'm basically gonna um, trace that mountain. I'm gonna trace that silhouette of that mountain, okay? And if we're looking at the original, I'm, yeah, I'm about a third. I'm gonna start about a third of the way down and then bring up my little mountain. Again, we don't have to be perfect when we're kind of just planning things out. We can kind of fix things up as we go. So something like that. And then I'm just gonna fill in that top band with that color that I made. And I'm not gonna lie, I am pretty proud of myself for matching that color <laughs> with, with a different, different brand and quality of paint. I'm telling you, matching color is, is like a fun game. Um, hopefully I made enough of this. So I'm going to bring this color all the way out for my sky. I'm definitely have to mix more up here. And I'm gonna bring that all the way out. Now, if you've um, got your sky down or you've put your, started painting your color down in your sky and you're thinking, oh, that is way too dark. I didn't want that to be that dark. So just wipe off the excess paint on your brush um, and then you can dip into some white and kind of blend in some white paint and that'll just um, tone it down a bit and lighten it up. All right. So there's my sky. And what I do want to do, what I do want to do is, let me make sure I'm in the frame here so you can see all of this. I want this part of my sky to be a little bit brighter because I am going to put in a, a sun there or a, a moon, whatever that is. Um, so I want to brighten up that area where that sun will be. So I'm going to wipe off any excess paint I have there and I'm going to mix up just a lighter version with more white and I'm going to Ooh, that had more blue in it than I <laughs> had anticipated. Um, so I'm gonna grab a touch of red to counteract that. But I want this to be really light so I can add a bright spot for my sun, where my sun will go, or my moon, whatever that is. So I'm just adding a little bright spot for where my light source will be.
And I think I want that to be a little bit brighter. So adding more white. Not really showing up, so I'm gonna just add straight white. There we go. Just adding some pure white to that area where my light source will be eventually. So kind of blending it around. Something like that. Just a little hint that something is brighter there. I don't know if you can tell. Um, I can add a bit more white so you can it can show up. Oh, hello. That's a lot of white over there. Oh no, I'm falling apart here. I need some my my little blades. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to because I got a lot of paint in my brush right now and it's not it's not letting me put pure white down there. So I'm just gonna wipe off that excess paint. Okay, and then dip into my white here and work on brightening that up some more. Yeah, that's a little better. Really want that to kind of show that we've got light coming from this area. Yeah. All right, that looks brighter to me. Okay, so now I'm going to work on my next purple color, which is the mountain. So the mountain is darker than the sky. So I'm basically mixing the same color, but I'm not using as much white. So I can still use my little spot here, but I'm not gonna add um, as much white this time. And in fact, the white that's already in my brush is gonna kinda help me out here. Um, so let's see what we've got here. closer again yours your colors will probably be different than mine and that's that's totally fine so what we're gonna do here for our mountain is we're gonna start the mountain quite thin and just kind of um, we're not coloring in like a big third of our canvas right we're just keeping it a little thin and then we're gonna kind of blend our way down so and here's where you can now use your darker purple to kind of get in those little ridges and details. So this looks fairly smooth, but I'm going to add some little ridges and things to make it look a bit more rugged. Something like that. Ooh, I like that purple. How about that? Cool. So now I'm going to softly blend out that bottom line. Just to kind of buff out that harsh line. Cool. Again, I've been um, working on these paintings in my notebook first and then painting them live here with you guys. So I'm always like a little nervous about how they turn out. So that's why I'm saying things like cool because this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing it happen. All right. So again, we've kind of painted in that ridge line, that horizon line for our mountain at the top and then I'm just kind of buffing out that bottom edge, okay? And now um, I don't have a lot of paint in my brush, right? 
I'm gonna wipe off any excess globs. I don't have a lot of paint in my brush. I'm gonna tap into some white and I'm gonna start blending more into the bottom of this mountain. I'm kind of buffing, buffing the bottom here and this is gonna help it look like it's just got some misty, foggy business happening. And how far am I bringing this down? Uh, if I look into here, the mist is actually, we're going down pretty much halfway, you know, halfway into the painting, into down the canvas, I mean. So I'd bring down this misty white um, down about halfway, halfway down into the canvas. Cool. Good blending happening out there, I'm sure. If you're not getting a good blend and you're like, wow, I have no mist, it's all purple. Well, that just tells me that you've um, got too much paint on your brush remaining from your mountain, okay? Um, so I would just wipe off any excess paint from your brush, even give it a good clean rinse, and then go back in with your you're white. And I'm just kind of having fun blending here. And buff out that, that edge there. How are we doing? All right. So we have this mist happening, right? And then in front of the mist, we have these trees that are so, so far away that we can't even make that, the details exactly. They're basically just um, straight lines, okay? And that color is similar to my mountain color, my original mountain color, but it's a bit more red. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix that mountain color. So the same kind of um, uh, level of darkness as the mountain color, but for me, my trees are gonna be a bit more red and I'm just gonna plop those trees right over that mist that we just did. And to be honest, I might be moving to a smaller brush depending on how, <laughs> how these trees come out with this big brush. Let's see, that is super red, but that might be what I'm looking for here. I don't know. So, I'm using my, um, my big flat brush still. I wanna work out as much paint as I can. Working that brush back, stick your thumb in blue paint, just for fun. Um, <laughs> I'm moving that brush back and forth. And I wanna get as good of an edge as I can. I've got myself into some white paint here, that's okay. All right, we'll see how this goes with this brush. This brush has seen better days, it's not as sharp as it used to be. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling down these these trees in the mist. And back here I even got a tree that's going up into the sky. So yeah, have fun with where your your little trees. Yeah, this this brush is just super scratchy. But that can kind of be my guide. So I'm just gonna scratchy scratch these trees all over and get rid of some of this paint. How about that? All right, so I'm going to um, abandon this brush. I am gonna get rid of as much paint as I can onto my canvas. And this is kind of, this is our middle ground, right? This is our middle ground right here. And these trees are, are sprouting out there. I'm gonna move on to a different brush. So I'm gonna wipe off the excess paint here give this brush a good clean rinse, and I'm gonna move on to a smaller flat angled brush. All right, I need to get some new angled brushes. All right, 
got my smaller one here, smaller angled brush. Hopefully this will do the job. I'm going to mix up some more color here because I'm running low. I think I want a little bit more red this time. All right. All right, so now, ooh, too much, too much paint. I want to get that back and forth motion to get a nice edge or as good of an edge as we can with these brushes. All right. There we go. So again, these are kind of off in the distance, the middle ground. We don't see much of their details. And you can kind of see already how different um, these two colors are. This is much darker than my, my lighter foreground, middle ground here, but that's totally cool. That's totally fine. If I want, I can just mix a lighter color. Again, keeping it more red. I want that redder color. Ooh. All right, let's see what that does. How about it? So I'm just kind of scratching more of this color in here. It's not getting the red I want it to be, but that's fine. <laughs> just keep sticking my, my thumb in blue paint here. <laughs> All right. What kind of cam canvases? What kind of palettes do you guys use? Do you guys have fancy palettes? instead of a paper plate like I do. <laughs> All right, so we could have, we could just have fun kind of scratching in these little background trees. And I'm just gonna keep pulling, wiping that color off and pulling it down. All right. All right. So I'm just, I've basically started pulling the rest of um, that color downwards. And what I want to do is start building um, our foreground color, not the trees yet, but this foreground color down here, which is a bit darker and bluer than the, the tree midground color. So I'm going to. I'm going to put my little brush to the side. So let me wipe that off. Give that a rinse. And I'm going to return to my, whoop, just still wet. I'm going to return to my big brush here. And I'm going to mix in a darker, cooler color for my foreground. So I'm going to, it's just going to have more blue in it. So let's start with some blue, add some red. Let's get a dark, cool purple. Let's see what that does. Ooh, yeah. I like that. So now I'm kind of scrubbing, scrubbing that into our middle ground color and I want to get a nice blend. So kind of just how we were blending and scrubbing out the bottom of that mountain we're now kind of blending and scrubbing out the bottom of our middle ground color where those trees are. Ooh, yeah, I'm liking this. This is fun. And then I'm just gonna pull down. And I'm just gonna work this color all the way down. And I've gone quite blue, so I'm just gonna make sure I've got some red mixing in here. Oh yeah, this is cool. Mmm, very 
cool. I like these, I like these colors. I'm usually not big on purple, at least as the only color. <laughs> but this is, this is fun. This is going to be fun. And I'm looking in the, the, um, Facebook video and it really looks like there's no blending happening here. I'm seeing that now. It looks like it's purple white, but I promise you there's some blending in there. All right. Cool. So now we've basically got our background, our middle ground and our foreground. And now we can start mixing tree colors. Okay, so for our trees, we've got two sets. Okay, um, these dark ones, these two, two or three, so one, two, three, and then these like dead trees here. Those um, darker ones are very close to us, so they're right in the foreground. But then we have these, these other trees, one, two, three, four, five-ish. Um, these are a lighter color, so they're a bit farther away from us. So I'm gonna start with those, those ones right there, okay? So I'm gonna mix a color that's darker than the foreground color. So it's gonna be darker than this one. So right away, this is gonna be very different from our, from our sketch here. Um, so I'm looking for a darker purple than this foreground, okay? Um, so let's go back to that color that we had for the foreground and let's get a darker one. And how do we do that? Let's grab a smidgiest of smooch of black. And maybe that'll do it for us. Let's see. I don't know. I'm going to start with these. These three little guys over here in the corner, they're just hanging out. Let's see if we can find them. Just pulling down three trunks there and I might need a little bit darker because they're blending, blending. Let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. More blue, smidgy smooch of black. There we go. They showed up. And then I can kind of press my brush back and forth. This is right out of the Bob Ross handbook. Cool. All right, so let's do that a bit more slowed down. Um, so I'm going to demo that a bit slower on this big tree that I'm gonna put right here. Grab some of that smidgy smooch of black. All right, so here we are. I'm going for this guy right here. Uh, and I'm starting in that sky for that tree trunk. Don't be shy, here it comes. I'm holding my bristles perpendicular to my canvas and sound effects help. Okay. And then with, with my brush here, again, br uh, bristles are always perpendicular to the canvas, okay? Meaning that the tippy tips of the brush are touching. I'm gonna start with my corner and then I'm gonna rock my hand back and forth and just kind of tippy tap. Just tapping. The, the flat brushes are really helpful here. The flat angled brushes are especially helpful. And then I can bring that all the way down. And he's got another friend um, coming out to his side here. Let's grab some more. I'm going to add a little bit more red to this. All right. 
and again let's pull out that trunk something like that and holding the brush on the corner just tapping back and forth back and forth something like that he looks really blue but that's all right something like that all right for our last set our last set of trees these are very close to us so they're going to be the darkest so i want to make that same purpley color but i'm going to add a smidgy smooch more black so let's get this purple going again smidgy more black and i think we've got it so now i'm adding those trees that are in the foreground So this guy right kind of in the middle of our mountain. Something like that. And then we got this really big guy in the, the right corner here, and he's so big that his top is somewhere off the canvas. Mixing some more of that color. All right, so he's got a big old trunk over here. And his boughs are just, they go right off the top of the canvas here. Something like that. He's just a big old tree, Bob Ross would say. And then in the original, we've got just these, you know, naked um, tree trunks hanging out. They lost their branches. They had a rough winter, but they are still standing strong and proud. All right. Comes those little tree branches, uh, tree trunks. I'm gonna have one just kind of hanging out right here, another guy hanging out here, someone over here. Why not? And I can move on to my little brush, grabbing some paint. And you can give them little branches, maybe. Cool. All right. And then for our final trick, I'm going to go into some pure white with a clean brush nice clean brush into my white paint and I'm gonna put in our little light source whether it's our Sun or moon and then that's really all she wrote on that one folks all right so different right We've got two totally different paintings here. Um, so this came out more purpley 
than the reddish pink here, okay? Um, so yeah, cool. I love seeing how different it is. Again, it's always a fun challenge to try to color match, um, but we had two different types of paints here, both acrylic, but the ones that I used here were much more um, uh, better quality. Um, but you can see we can get the same effect, right? Cool. All right, thank you guys so much for painting with me. Um, and thanks again to Jana Marie Foundation for having me on these wellness breaks. I'll be back uh, next Thursday for another um, Jana Marie Foundation wellness break. And I'll be on my, um, my own paint page on Tuesday next week. Um, so Tuesday at Paint with Jackie, um, 2 o'clock, we'll be doing a thank you painting for all of the frontline workers. So join me next Tuesday at Paint with Jackie if you want to paint a little thank you gift for someone in your life who's a frontline worker, a nurse, a doctor, postal worker, a truck driver, food delivery person, someone out there that you want to give them a little something as a token of your gratitude for all the work that they're doing to keeping keeping us going in these crazy times. So thanks again for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed this one. This is Jackie from Paint with Jackie and I'll see you next time.